Hello. Good morning. Oh, is it okay? Working good. Uh, so good morning. Um, so I'm going to be presenting the the what is the first corpus of full text uh, being uh, aggregated by by Europeana, which is the Europeana newspapers, and I I try to focus center the presentation around um, what we have done in the past, uh, showing what we are doing at the moment, and what we know about <coughs> what might be your, our future interests on the short and some in some cases on the longer term. Um, so I'm Nuno Freire, I'm from uh, INS KID, a research uh, institute in Portugal. Um, my background is in computer science. Um, and uh, INSKD is one of the um, one of the partners uh, within the the, the European uh, digital service infrastructure, uh, and this is one of the key areas where we cooperate with, uh, where we are a partner of Europeana. So for for the the presentation, I'm going to. Uh, show the the original a uh, little bit <coughs> about the original results of the project European newspapers. Uh, then go through the current status, the envisaged future work, and leave you with some contact information in the end. So my background is a bit technical, so I th I hope um, my presentation is good for you. Probably my colleagues, I was kind of the third choice to come here. <laughs> to present to you, they would they are more used to to talking. They know a little bit more about what you would be interested about hearing. So, but anyway, we have some time for questions in the end, and I hope I can I can address them. Um, so, uh, a, a little just a short introduction to European. Those who who are not very familiar with what we are. Um, so, European aggregates metadata from focused on the cultural heritage sector. Uh, so that means aggregating data about what is available inside libraries, museums, archives, audiovisual archives, anything that may be considered relevant for cultural heritage, which is some kind of, uh, in some cases, a, bare, uh, a concept difficult to, to define what is cultural heritage and what is not. Of course, many much content. It's pretty clear. So, um, so it's uh, and the European provides a, a portal for for end users to access the data and the digital objects that are aggregated from these organizations. So it's available at Europeana.eu. Uh, all metadata is available under CC0. Um, so everybody can just reuse the data without, uh, without asking or anything. Uh, it's very free. The objective is really to promote the usage of these resources. And so the end in the portal, it helps the users to get a, an overview of what is available in the cultural heritage institution. They get a preview of the objects and then they are linked to the source where can actually access the digital, the digital object. So comparing to query, it's a, a little bit like the virtual language observatory, um, but focused on cultural heritage resources. Um, so and European also tries to promote the the reuse of this of the data from for the culture from the cultural heritage. Organizations, so it makes available APIs, link data uh, for for reuse by other applications, uh, or whatever. All all available under a CC0 license. So really trying to promote the usage. So European newspapers was. While European usually just focus on aggregating metadata and then providing access to the digital objects at the original site of the data provider, 
European Newspapers was the first project where European Act we started to work with the content. So here European Act we uh, aggregated images, the OCR text, and collected everything into in, uh, centrally and tried to work with it to, in order to provide uh, a better a better service where where all the content when all the content and all the full text is available in the central place, uh, it's possible to build services for the end users that were not possible uh, before while just working with the metadata. So this is the this was the first uh, is it, and it's still the first uh, case uh, in European uh, the first collection with with full text content. So it was a, a project that ran from 2012 to 2015. So it, it ended more or less a bit more than a year ago. Um, the results uh, of the of the project you, you may it's available on or still available on those websites, um, and it aggregated around 12 million pages of newspaper images and OCR text um, and about 3.6 thousand metadata records about referring also to newspapers um, but not all the images and not all the full text was available for these cases. So in total um, it, it, it contains information about 20 million pages of full text newspapers <coughs> but not all were pos was possible to aggregate century either because of questions <coughs> of copyright uh, or technical difficulties so in the end we have 12 million pages actually in Europeana so and there is a portal <coughs> which was provided at the time by the European library that makes ac gives access to these resources focused for end users, researchers, etc. So I'll try to show a little bit about what that portal uh, allows uh, to do. Um, basically it allows to to navigate uh, the, the newspapers uh, using um, a, a calendar uh, and by so you find the title that you are interested in, then you can navigate the years where it is available and which for which days there are there are um, there are issues uh, of that newspapers available in the European newspapers portal. It also um, allowed the support for searching at the level of the article. Uh, so you could do search not just on the f get results not on the full issue but all even in some cases it was possible to do it uh, article by article um, this was only possible in some cases because the original uh, OCR digitization and OCR process uh, only for some libraries the separation between the articles within the pages uh, only some libraries had that so it was possible to support that in the portal, but the original data is not available for, for each library. So the portal then allows users to search within, within a, a single issue of the newspapers and see on them there on your left uh, the OCR text with highlights uh, of the of the, the keywords that the user is searching for. The, the results are also highlighted on the, <coughs> on the images which are shown on the right. So it allows the users to search by title, by newspaper's title. And um, and so and this was a specific portal for European newspapers, but and then it also connected to the main portal of, of Europeana. So the the two systems were then interconnected. <coughs> or 
where there is a, a short a general preview uh, uh, on the European uh, portal just based on the metadata which then links to the European uh, newspapers portal where the user can then uh, do search within the within the, the issues and so on. So just a, a, an overview of how the, the content that was segregated. So this is for those uh, countries or libraries which uh, were able to send the, their OCR to Europeana. So it's uh, around 12 million. Here it says 11 and a half million full text pages. Um, so with libraries from those countries. There was a, a strong, uh, many of the most active partners were from German speaking countries. Uh, so there is quite a, um, quite a lot of content in German in this collection. The British Library, for example, was a partner in the in the project, but for reasons which I'm not completely remember right now, they were not able to to share their newspapers uh, corpus with the with <coughs> European at the time. I believe it was copyright issues. So after so the project ended next last year. Now the the work going on is trying to make that difficult step of uh, making a, a pro going from a project to a sustainable uh, service that can be maintained over over the years. Um, so and that is now ongoing. Europeana in Europeana, European is quite committed to to it, um, trying to find uh, the support to to keep this, this going, uh, as there is a lot of usage. Um, so it is already establishing uh, social and media uh, communication channels for around the, this corpus. Uh, there's a blog, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn pages about European newspapers. Um, we also are, we have ongoing uh, collaboration and discussion with the Digital Public Library of America, who are also uh, doing a similar, um, have similar, similar interests of doing something with the newspapers corpus in the, in the United States. Um, and we are, we are also quite active um, in, in one, uh, in what is called IIIF, the uh, International Image Interoperability Framework, which is a technology that is uh, being developed <coughs> in a, a, an open way uh, by and many, and it's quite suitable to work with images and full text and allowing users to have very rich um, user interfaces based on, on, um, on this kind of material. So they're, they're quite suitable for the or something like, like newspaper, digitized newspapers. Um, so both uh, European and the Digital Public Library of America is, um, are quite active within the IIIF um, working groups. And there is even one working group specific for, for newspapers. Um, where so we are able to get into the, the protocol features that sometimes we need are particularly, particularly important for newspapers. Um, so there we have from the end of the project and also in, the, uh, in these early phases, uh, there has already been uh, lots of interest uh, for, for this purpose within the research communities. Um, these are some examples of, um, of research reusing the, the, um, the corpus. Uh, you can find more, we, I'll just leave the links here. You, I think you can, the PowerPoint will be online later on. So 
So if, you, if you're interested about knowing more, you can just go to this slide and follow the, follow the links for more details. I'll try to, f to, to talk just about some of the more relevant ones. Um, so just some basic information about statistics of usage. So actually, there are plenty of users going to using the portal and they actually stay there for 15 minutes, which is quite, quite good uh, for a, an average session duration. So people go there, find it, and they find interesting exploring uh, the newspapers. So I'm going to talk a little bit more. So um, one of the key areas that we work on is trying to, to now push or try to facilitate the reuse of this corpus in, in the research community. So I'm going to speak about um, three, uh, three cases, um, which is Europeana Research, uh, a particular channel of Europeana that is focusing on providing cultural heritage resources for, for research use. Uh, our data pilot uh, that is ongoing with you that um, and uh, an open corpus of named entity recognition in historic newspapers so just about um, what how is this corpus available in European research uh, so you have the the URL of the where where you can see it um, and over there you, you have dumps, so you can download the complete full text of some of, of, some of the newspapers. Not all of them, um, but, but still quite a, a good amount. I think I will say how many later on, I hope. Nope. So, I'll explain a bit later. Anyway, um, so in this um, so in this website you have the dumps of the complete uh, full text of the newspapers, organized by by country. In, inside um, each country, then you ha we have made available uh, one archive uh, compiling all the all the issues of a newspaper that, that we have. So you can download one new, the, the full text of one newspaper for, for all that is available. So within each newspaper you will find, um, it is then divided by, by years and then inside each year the date so you get all the issues, usually it's just one issue per day at maximum. In some cases there are two, two issues in the same day uh, and you can, you can get all that. So it's available as, as one JSON file for each issue. And in that JSON file you will find metadata and full text. So the, the format of this file was actually discussed with uh, with a few researchers, and actually one of one of them was a Clarin partner we had in an European project, who who commented on the first releases we did of these dumps, and trying to give us some feedback on how it would be a, a useful format for researchers to to be able to use this um, the corpus with the, with their tools. So I hope. This format is suitable for your purposes as well. Um, so in this, inside this JSON file, you'll find metadata and all the full text of the issue. And the full text is organized by each page. So you find a separation uh, page by page, a sequence of pages with the text inside each one of them. So. Some more details about the JSON files. The, the fields are, are named after the WinCore properties. Um, 
the full text is contained in an element whose name is content as text. Um, one page per, per element. And there is also some information which for each issue about the, um, the estimated quality of the OCR. Um, so this is a bit dependent of the of the um, of the software that did the OCR. So it was that software that gave us the, the measure of the, the quality. So we don't we know that it's an indication of the quality of the OCR, but it's of course not 100% uh, reliable. But it's still good to give you an indication of for those newspapers who have best quality text and those who are not so much, not so good in terms of quality. And there are also JSON files for the whole newspaper issue and you can also check in there the quality for all the OCR, so the average quality b across all issues of that newspaper. So uh, I was saying earlier on, so not the complete corpus is available in these, uh, in these dumps uh, because not everything was public domain. So we, we, we did uh, quite a lot of work trying to clear the rights for all the, all this, all the content. And when we were executing the, the dump, so it, it, it still covers more than half. I believe it's around 7 million pages of all those 12 million that we have at Europeana. And we know now that there is more that can be made available. We just need to eventually do the work of exporting again. Uh, and it, it should be able to, to grow a bit further. So the full text is public domain and the metadata is available under CC0. So this can all, I know you all had, I heard from yesterday that many of you have difficulties with copyright. So this one is already cleared and you can just go ahead and do your work. So I need to speed up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to quickly just mention that we have um, a pilot uh, running with, uh, with EU that also based on this corpus. Uh, we are actually in the clearing, considered to be in the, in the clearing community uh, or within EU, EU that. Um, so and basically we are checking or we are piloting with you that how this same corpus that I just showed you that is available in European research, how would it work if we made it available on, on you that? Would that even facilitate further the reuse and the discoverability of, uh, of the corpus by researchers? Um, so we are trying to find how can the this how can you that help to help researchers discover them, uh, get access to them, reuse them, apply computational resources to it, uh, etc. So we are using key, three key uh, services from EUDAT. Um, B to share, to share the data amongst between researchers, B to handle for persistent identification of the newspapers and their issues. Um, and B to find to facilitate the discovery of the newspapers. So another ongoing work, I think I'm going to skip this one, just mention it brief, briefly. So um, there's also an ongoing work in building a, a, a named entity recognition corpus on these three languages based on this corpus. These are the re so you'll find the resources from the outcomes so far of this um, of this named entity recognition uh, annotated corpus on the slides. Um, so just uh, what 
what else is going on at, in European newspapers at this time? Um, so the the portal that was the result of the of the project is being um, is being now migrated uh, into a real service of Europeana. Uh, so we are currently migrating the the images and the full text into. Uh, the systems uh, of European and trying to make everything more stable uh, so that can be a, a more reliable service service for end users. Um, we are also improving and making an API over this corpus also to facilitate the, the reuse uh, of it and like I mentioned before we are we are working on triple IF the technology to really build a to leverage on the community, all the community software that is coming out uh, from around this, this technology to help us um, build a better service, more usable, more useful for, for researchers. So in this uh, website, you, you could already see uh, a preview of about how the new portal will be once it is in Europeana, for, but for the first, the first objective is really to hide, to try to have the same functionality as it has nowadays in the project, <coughs> in the portal from the early project, but now within Europeana, and then build up um, the capabilities of the portal later on. So. Okay, so I'll, I'll need to, yeah, so I need to finish, let me just say if there's something important to say in terms of future, of future plans. Oh, there are plans to, to keep this going, working with researchers to try to find out what, what is it that researchers need um, and try to improve on based on that. Um, and we are also trying to, one thing that's quite important is now to try to it was possible to aggregate this content based on a on a funded project um, but we now need to establish this aggregation mechanism in a more sustainable way without that something that can run without project funds uh, so that it can be done on the on the longer term uh, this is also a key area for us. So I, and I wanted now to leave you with the contacts of my colleagues uh, um, who are probably in some cases the, per the person that you would like to contact. So Clement Neudecker um, is the coordinator of the European Newspapers activities. So he's based on the Berlin State Library and he's the coordinator of European newspapers. So Ninke, uh, she is the European at there where is uh, part of the European staff. Um, and she's the head of collections of, uh, of, Europe, of Europeana. So the European newspapers collection is one of the several collections with inside Europeana. And so she's uh, responsible for that. So and I'm, I am the contact for the more technical or technological issues, uh, the data, the, the full text and so on, the tools around it. So um, thank you. I'm going to finish here. Um, time for a quick question. Um, if anybody has one. Okay. I was hoping that you could uh, say something about the tools. Um, the European newspapers tools um, the I've seen on the page. So that, um, from the project, the, the tools that resulted from the project. Yes. Uh, that, that, that's actually something that I'm not very familiar with. Uh, since, um, so I'm, I worked on the aggregation part, so bringing together. So when there was all this um, work on the site going on exploring tools 
and the tools were released in the end of the project. They are all listed where you probably have seen them, uh, but I don't actually know all the details about them. So just, just technically, uh, do we contact you or, or Clemens or, or do so we contact the, the people at the libraries? For the, the, tools, the, the tools themselves, so the tools are still maintained by the original developers at this time. Mm -hmm. So probably for each tool you would contact the... Mm -hmm. And if you need some more overall view of the tools, uh, Clemens, who was the coordinator, he certainly can, be, can help you. Okay, good, thank you. Um, I'm very pleased to see the uh, download, which I'm noticed the talk, so it looks like a, a very good, um, very good facility, and I think um, certainly. Must be the mic. You are can use the mic. Sorry. Um, very pleased to see the the download facility and the ongoing developments, and I'm sure we'll be in touch to look at further um, connections with with Clarin, and uh, it's very good good to uh, uh, to make contact with you.